Hi, this is Mark Spencer from Ripple Training. Welcome to the Ripple Bullets tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to apply Ripple Bullets, how to choose a background, how to style them, how to animate them, how to stack them, and how to add panels and shapes as background elements. The timecode numbers here will let you jump right to the section you're interested in. Let's get started. Here I'm in Final Cut Pro. Ripple Bullets can be found in the Titles browser under Ripple Bullets. You'll probably want to apply Ripple Bullets on top of a video or graphic. One option is to drag them. I'll undo that. If you want them to be applied to a specific range, you can tap the I and the O key to set a range, or you can press the X key to set an entire clip. I'm gonna tap I, Control D, and then five period for five seconds, and I'll get a five second range. Then in Ripple Bullets, I'll scroll down, I'll select a bullet asterisk, and press Q to perform a connect edit. To choose a background, I'll go to the inspector and make sure I'm on the title tab of the inspector. By default, the background is the underlying video, and it's probably what you want to use most of the time. It's also blurred by default, and it animates. Let's select our title and press the forward slash key to play it, and we'll see that the background blurs automatically. If you don't want it to blur, simply uncheck the checkbox. If you want to change the amount of blur, adjust the blur amount right here. You can scrub in the value field to go higher than the slider will allow you. Instead of the video underneath the title, you can choose a drop zone or a gradient. If you select Drop Zone, you can click this Drop Zone well. I'll open up my file browser, and I'll select a clip and click Apply. Or you can select a gradient, and then you can edit that gradient by opening the Gradient Editor. You can right-click to choose different colors. You can double-click to add tags. And you can change the position of tags and the start and end points of the gradient. Let's return to the underlying video. After deciding on the background, and I'm using the default, so there's really nothing to do, I want to style my text. To do so, I'll double click on the title. This action will automatically select the first text item, which is the bullet, and it will also automatically bring up the text inspector. I'm going to start with the text itself, so I'm going to click this right arrow at the top left of the viewer to select the text. So the first thing I'll do is type my new text and press Escape. Now I'll click it again to select it, and I can use all of the text inspector parameters to change the font. the font size, and other parameters if I want. You can also see in the viewer that I can change the position of the text simply by dragging on the arrows here. By default, the text is 3D. If you want 2D text, you can turn off 3D text right here. And if you scroll down, there are still options to adjust the face, outline, glow, and drop shadow. But if you do want to use 3D text, all of Final Cut Pro 10's 3D text features are available here, including the depth, lighting options, environment, and materials, including presets and building your own. And this is not a tutorial about using 3D text in Final Cut Pro, but just quickly, I'll show you that you can add any of these preset text options. For instance, nickel. And we've got a nickel type of metal applied to our text. Now, I'm going to double-click the title again, and the bullet is selected. Because the bullet is also a text object, all of the 3D text parameters are available for styling. So for example, I could make it thicker. I could change its weight. I'll make it a little skinnier. And I can change its texture. So I'll link the side and back materials. And I can choose a new material for the front. For instance, wood. Oh, rosewood. 
Another cool thing to understand is you aren't limited to this particular type of bullet. While we have many preset bullets available, 12 of them in fact, in Ripple Bullets, to make it easy to grab one that you most likely want to use, you can use any of the symbols that are available in Final Cut Pro 10. If I go up to the Edit menu and choose Emoji and Symbols, and I make sure that the bullet is selected, you can see the white rectangle about it, I can use any of the other bullets or any of these items, but I can't use Emoji. But I'll go back to Bullets and Stars, and for example, I'll select this diamond here, double-click it, and I've replaced my bullet with this diamond. I'm going to undo that. And that's all there is to styling your Ripple Bullets. To adjust the animation settings of our Ripple Bullet, we'll go to the Title Inspector. By default, the bullet and the text are both animated to come on the screen and to go off the screen, and the bullet is animated during the entire time it's on the screen. I'll press the forward slash key to play the selected title. If you don't want it to animate on or off, you can use these checkboxes here. Below the background controls are a set of bullet controls. If you don't want to see the bullet, you can turn it off. You can adjust the bullet size independently of the text. You can also adjust the bullet position independently of the text. As well as the bullet's rotation. Not just in Z, but because these bullets are 3D, if I open up rotation, we can also adjust the bullet in Y. I'll undo that and an X, and I'll undo that. These next series of checkboxes determine how the bullet animates onto and off the screen. By default, it fades, scales, and rotates in and off. Let's say I just want it to fade in, and I just want it to scale out without fading or rotating. I'll press the forward slash key to play that. After the bullet animates on, it pulses and wriggles, and you can adjust that. You can increase or decrease the pulse amount and the speed. You can set it to a full or half range, and you can adjust the wriggle amount, frequency, and noise. For example, I can increase the pulse amount quite a bit. I'll decrease the speed, I'll increase the wriggle amount and the noisiness, and play that, and we get something much more dramatic. Or I can simply turn off the pulse amount and the wriggle amount. And if I play now, the bullet animates on and stays static and then animates off. Below the bullet controls are a set of text controls. We can choose whether we want to see the text or not. We can adjust the text position independently of the bullet. We can adjust the text rotation in X, Y, and Z, just like with a bullet. And these are all keyframable as well, so you can set keyframes to animate the text rotation if you'd like. And then we can determine how the text animates on and off the screen. By default, it fades in from zero, it does not move at all, and it does not scale at all. So for example, if we wanted to move in from the right, we could drag on the X slider. And let's move to the beginning of the animation so we can see how far it's moving. And if we want it to scale also, I'll set the scale to zero, and now it will scale up from the right as it plays. You can also have it rotate into position around X, Y, and Z. I'll set Y to 180. I'll set move in X to zero, and move in Y to 200. And let's try that. Let's also address the spread amount so more of the letters animate at the same time.
You can also adjust the speed of the incoming animation. You can speed it up by dragging to the left or slow it down to the right. And we looked at the spread. The text out animation controls work the same way. You can have the text move, fade, scale, and rotate out at the end of the bullet. You can also choose the direction that the text animates in and the text animates out. I'll get to these grid controls when we talk about stacking our text layers. I frequently find that I want to have multiple bulleted items on a screen it together as a list and have them animate on one after the other. Here's an easy way to do that. First, I like to finish all of my styling decisions up front because I'm going to copy this existing one. So, I'm also going to turn off the blur background because I don't want each copy to blur the background as well. With this bullet selected, I'll hit Command C to copy it. And I want to move forward a specific amount of time. I'll hit the right arrow to move through until this is fully animated on. And then I'll press Command V to paste my next bullet. I'll measure that distance with I and O and Control D, so that's one second and nine frames. So now I'll press Shift plus 109 to move forward one second and nine frames and Command V to paste again. Then I'll extend out each of these bullets by selecting the outgoing edit point and pressing Shift X for an extend edit. I'll place my playhead where I can see all of these. I'll grab the middle one. Actually, I'll grab the bottom one we started with. And back in the title inspector, under position all, I'll drag in Y to move that first one up. Then I'll select the top one in the stack. And in the title inspector, I'll drag in position all to drag that down. If I play back now, each animates on separately, and they all animate off together. Now to make sure they're properly aligned, I can select any one of them. The top one is selected by default, scroll to the bottom of the title inspector, and enable the grid. And the grid has multiple options for changing the line width, the grid width, and height, but this will work pretty well. Make those lines a little more solid so we can see them. Then I can use this grid to align and distribute my bullets. And I'll turn it off. Now once I have multiple bullets on the screen, I can still select the bottom one and turn on the blur, so it blurs just the background. If I were to select the top one, it would also blur the other bullets. But sometimes you want an additional device to help set off the background from the foreground bullets. And for that, we've included a background panel and a background shape. They both work very much the same, so I'll show you the background panel. I've selected this bottom bullet in order to set a range. I'll press X to set a range for that once it's selected. Then I'll select the background panel and press Q. Then with the shift key held down, I'll drag the background panel below all the bullet items. If I play now, the background panel animates in, but it needs a little bit of adjustment. One thing I need to do is turn off the blur for the first bullet and then I can select the background panel and it has its own blur and I can adjust that amount right here. The other thing I can do is adjust the panel position with the adjust position parameter right here. So let's make sure it comes in far enough for our bullet points. And I'll also reduce the opacity. The panel doesn't have to come in from the left. It can also come in from the right, from the top or the bottom. And that in a nutshell is how to use ripple bullets. I'm Mark Spencer, and thank you for watching.